What's going on guys, Chase on Two Wheels here, and holy crap am I excited. Two years ago, I had just watched a promo video from a company that was making snowboard helmets at the time that were gonna start making motorcycle helmets. They called them an Atlas and they had this really cool promo video. Well, two years later, I am holding one in my freaking hands. Now this has happened before. Company comes out with a cool ad campaign for a product they have not even made yet. We all get super hyped on their product video. Then the product is garbage or worse, doesn't even come out. Now, luckily that's not the case today. So with that being said, today let's review Rorock's Atlas helmet. So guys, I've had the helmet for a couple weeks now, but before we get into the review, I did want to talk about something with you guys, and that's that Rurok is not paying me to do this review. They simply gave me the helmet to review so I can make a video for you guys. That's the exact same way I do all my other product reviews. I'm not here to kiss anybody's ass. I'm just here to tell you guys how I feel about a product. And with all that being said, let's get to the review. All right guys, so the Atlas helmet. This is the first motorcycle helmet Rurok has ever made, but it's not the first helmet the company has ever made. They actually have a long track record of revolutionizing the snowboarding helmet market. This is just the first motorcycle helmet they've made, and that takes them out of that category of companies that pop up with a cool product and then just slowly disappear whenever the product's garbage. These guys actually have a legitimate company that does stuff that they have a track record that they need to upkeep. So when it comes to the helmet, the first thing you are probably gonna notice is that design. This is one of the main areas Rurok is going to differentiate themselves from the other motorcycle helmet companies. The model you're looking at is their Ronin design and is one of their limited edition designs that they put out. I've talked to the guys at Rurok and they plan on continuing this style of having a limited edition run of a design and I love it. It gives a really cool exclusivity of a design. So with the Ronin here, they only made 500. So if you get one of these special designs, it's really cool. While we're on the subject of design, do you guys remember that video I made a little while back talking about how the motorcycle helmet market can get boring sometimes? Well, consider Rurag the Sriracha in the motorcycle helmet game. These guys are out of the gate, not only coming out with a helmet design that's unique to anything else in the market, but they're also investing a ton of time in making cool graphics for those helmets. So whether you like the graphics or not isn't really the point. The point is that these guys are investing a ton of time in making really unique helmets that fit how I personally think us motorcyclists feel about our motorcycles. We want them to have this cool, unique look. Well, now we're going to have more helmets in the market that are cool and unique that can match our different bikes and riding styles and stuff like that. I think it's really cool and something we should appreciate as a motorcycling community. Okay, sorry, that's all. I just had to get that little rant out of the way and now we can, we can get back now that I'm done with, you know, feelings. So yeah, we have this really unique shape with these little side cut vents that look like they are straight off of a supercar. The visor has this unique shape and on this Ronin model specifically, the first thing I thought about when I saw it was that the helmet looks like this buff dude with his teeth showing. If you can't tell, I'm a huge fan of the design. I will admit the Ronin graphic isn't really my style as far as gear and colors, but I do really love the helmet shape and even though they are brand new to the market, there is no shortage of helmet colors or designs. Now, as far as construction goes, the helmet is gonna be made from aerospace grade carbon fiber from our beautiful Marinara loving friends over in Italy. And that carbon fiber shell is going to keep the weight of the helmet down to 3.11 pounds. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys are like me and you're like, oh, 3.11 pounds, got it. How much is that? Well, for reference, here are a few other helmets I own and their associated weights. So yeah. The helmet is really freaking light. Even compared to other carbon fiber helmets, this helmet is by far the lightest helmet I own. This is probably going to be the first thing you'll notice if you saw one in person and picked it up for yourself. By the way, these Atlas helmets are this light and come in at about half the price of one of these other crazy expensive carbon fiber helmets. For example, this new Bell helmet that I'm currently reviewing is really light. It looks cool and is also made of carbon fiber. It retails for $749, while the Rurok Atlas retails for $400. Now with very light helmet comes the question of safety. To be honest with you guys, when I first picked this helmet up and noticed how light it was, I thought to myself, how can a helmet be this light 
and still be safe. I was really worried that it was gonna be the whole thing of it was only DOT certified. And if we can all be honest, that is not comforting at all for something that is supposed to save your life. But we do not have to worry about that with this helmet. It is both DOT and ECE certified. They also have this very, and I mean very awesome chin strap called a Fidlock. This thing is by far the fastest and easiest chin strap I have ever used and is exactly the same safety wise as their traditional D-ring that we're all used to. This side of the strap magnetizes to the other and once it magnetizes, this little metal section clicks into place and when you apply the type of force on it, it does not move. I mean, think about it. When a motorcycle strap is really used, it's with a force trying to pull the helmet off your head, right? Well, with the magnet holding the clip into place, it maintains that safety level while allowing you to easily pull this red strap to simply unclip, making it super easy to pull off or on. This is gonna be one of those things you probably won't notice a lot from the get-go, but once you use it a little while and get used to it, and then for some reason I had to go back to a D-ring setup, you're gonna really understand how much time you're spend fiddling with a D-ring strap. And it's gonna start making you wonder why more motorcycle helmet manufacturers don't use this new Fidlock system. So as far as comfort features, the Atlas does come with a removable liner that is coated to prevent bacteria buildup and is also washable. Ventilation is also something they really thought about. The Atlas has six intake vents as well as six exhaust vents that you can see all over the helmet. Now let's talk about the visor real quick before we jump on the bike. The one you're seeing in this model is their black model, but they have all these options. The helmets do ship with a clear and a black visor, which is really cool. Y'all know I'm all about that reflective game though, so I need to get one of them reflective visors ASAP. The visors are anti-fog and anti-scratch, which is nice, but it does require a tool to remove it. Rurag does include the tool that can also be used as a bottle opener, which is nice, but it's definitely something I'm going to look at them to upgrade down the road. To be honest, I personally don't change my visor that much at all, but maybe once a year. Because of that, I'm not really worried about it affecting my daily riding since I don't change my visor out that often, but it is, I just hate having to have a tool to remove a visor. You guys might not care depending on how much you remove and change your visors out though. Now, before we get out of here, I did want to touch on something that we're going to end up talking more about down the road, and that's how the Atlas is compatible with Rorox's soon to be released Shockwave system, which is their Bluetooth communicator. As of making this video, I don't think they've released it yet, but the Shockwave is a small Bluetooth module you're able to install in the rear of the helmet that gives you full Bluetooth functionality without adding any bulk to the outside of the helmet. I think this is a huge selling factor for this helmet, but I'll wait to talk about that down the road once I've had time to test it out and use it. What's also really amazing is that this module area was made for the Shockwave, but there is no reason Rorock couldn't make another module for this area. Now, obviously Bluetooth is cool and all, but having that module area opens up the helmet's capability to do whatever you want. Being a moto vlogger, I'm like, well, what if there was a battery bank that I could plug my GoPro into with this little battery in the back of my helmet, and now suddenly I can power my GoPro forever? Like, there's endless possibilities. Like, let me know in the comments what you guys can think of for what cool modules you would like to have in the back of your helmet. Like, what if there was a crash detection thing that could alert people? Like, dude, so much cool stuff. Let me know in the comments any ideas you guys can come up with. All right guys, so that is the Atlas helmet from Rurock. Let's go jump on the bike and let's talk about what I feel about the helmet after riding with it for a couple weeks. All right guys, so we're here with the uh, Rurock Atlas helmet. We got the Ronin on. Uh, before we get going, I want to tell you guys, this strap, probably already told you in the studio, but man, that strap is everything. So I've got the Nikon still, so figured we might as well come up to North Georgia to film this review. All right, so let's talk about the Atlas. Uh, first off, let's talk about fit. Um, I have ridden in this thing all day long and it is extremely comfortable. I don't have any pressure points whatsoever. And uh, I've actually enjoyed riding the helmet. I've, I've had helmets before. There's been some of them, man. I ride in it for like two hours and I start getting a headache because there's pressure points. Not having anything with this helmet. I've been in it for about five, six hours today. No problems. But we have a straightaway. I want to tell you guys one thing about the wind noise. I don't know if you can hear it in the audio, but if I duck my head out from this windscreen, the wind noise is pretty bad. I know that was kind of abrupt, but we had the straightaway. I wanted to go ahead and tell you guys that. 
personally, I don't think the wind noise really gets that bad until you get over around 50 miles per hour. That's when the wind noise starts getting really bad. Now, if you had like a naked bike or something and you were gonna be on the highway, it is going to be extremely loud. The interesting thing though, is on the way here, I had earplugs in listening to music. I didn't realize that the wind noise was bad when I had earplugs in listening to music and it was highway. It's two hours of highway all the way here to the mountains. So I found it interesting that when I took my earplugs out so that I could hear myself talk for this review, I was then like, oh, there is a lot of wind noise. So the helmet has a ton of wind noise, probably more wind noise than I've ever heard before, but it can be alleviated by getting a pair of earplugs. Now, obviously you don't want to buy a brand new helmet and get earplugs for it, but for all the other stuff that I feel like this helmet gives, it might be worth it. So guys, going back to the fit of the helmet, I already said the helmet feels really good, but also the padding. So this helmet's gonna come in at, uh, what is it, high threes, mid fours, $400. So I feel like the padding is adequate at that price level. Does it feel like uh, that brand new bell that I have that's like $800? No, but this helmet cost, does not cost $800, you know? So for other $400 helmets that I have, I feel like the padding feels really good. I think it's soft. I've gotten some comments on Instagram. I asked you guys what you wanted me to look into on the helmet. And a lot of you guys said that it was getting, the padding was getting bad reviews. I don't know if those people maybe got bad pads or something like that, but I haven't noticed that. Hold on, let me pass this guy real quick. Now there is this little peak here. My face fits in here fine, even with a crooked nose. I fit in fine, so fitment wise, I really love this helmet. It, uh, it's super comfortable. And uh, now back to what we were talking about. I mentioned that I've been on the road for about five or six hours today. Something that I've noticed, and it is the biggest thing with this helmet that you guys are gonna notice for you guys that physically grab one or go check one out if your buddy has one, is weight. This helmet is entirely carbon fiber, and the fact that it's $400 blows my mind. For a $400 helmet, I've got some really expensive helmets in the garage. This is by far the lightest helmet in my garage, and it's incredible to ride with it for a long period of time. If this helmet didn't have such bad wind noise, it would literally be the perfect helmet to have on a cross-country trip because you don't have that weight of a helmet weighing you down. Being for real with you guys, honestly, it does not feel like I have a helmet on at all which is the most comfortable situation I can possibly be in, right? As a motorcyclist, I don't want to have this heavy thing on my head. This helmet basically alleviates that problem. Biggest deal of this helmet, if you guys go check it out, or if you probably see other reviews, I guarantee you, anybody that reviews this helmet is going to talk about the weight. Let's talk about venting for a second. You guys saw in the studio shot, so there's vents all over this helmet. It's got these cool little graphics here. The helmet's got plenty of airflow, especially without a chin curtain. Now that chin curtain is one of the reasons that I feel like this helmet has way more wind noise than it probably will end up having. Now the guys over at Rurock, they told me that they're working on a chin curtain. They should have it out in, I don't know, a couple weeks, something like that. So the, the wind noise is bad, but I'm not really worried about it because of something else we'll talk about in a minute. But the also the fact that I don't have a chin curtain in, uh, you guys can see there's nothing down here, but it's coming out. So that's probably gonna alleviate a lot of the issue with the wind noise. I am in the wrong gear for this, uh, for this turn, holy cow. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but the view that we're about to get is gonna be phenomenal. Check that out, can you guys see that? Uh, North Georgia, man, North freaking Georgia. Speaking of these beautiful views, let's talk about the visor for a second. You know, it's a brand new helmet. It's got a, I've got the dark visor on. Rurock has other visor options, including some mirrored ones, which I'm really looking forward to checking some of those out. The visor is super clear. I mean, it's brand new. It should be clear, <laughs> unless I ruined it, but I didn't. Field of view, I can see everything. If I look into my uh, peripherals, I cannot see any of the helmet. So. The helmet's not obstructing any of my view right now. You guys can see my eyes. I can look all the way this way and all the way this way. Can't see the helmet at all. Now, something I don't like about the visor. You guys can see here, you need a tool to change the visor out. 
Now you might not be changing your visor off very often, but that throws me back to the very first Icon variant that I had. You had to remove the visor with a tool and I hated it. Actually, that was one of the first things I told the Rurock guys when they were here in Atlanta. I was like, guys, you've got a really badass looking helmet. I can't wait to review it, but I'm gonna tell you guys right now, that needs to change. We are in 2019, nobody should have to have a tool to hold with you to exchange your visor out. They told me they're already working on it, wasn't a big deal at all, and I was like, sweet. Something else I don't like about the visors is they're, is they're not little notches. So this visor, it'll have it go at the very top, go here, and come down, and it pops up, but I want it to click down. I can't get this visor to click shut. Now the visor never opens up once it's shut, but I just want some satisfactory, like, click. You know what I mean? That's something that I would really like to see. But if they're already adjusting the visor's uh, tool entry situation, hopefully they can give me a click at the bottom. I want a click barely open, and then maybe a click all the way top. I don't need the stuff in the middle. Sorry if the wind noise is really bad for you guys. So touching back on the uh, vents that I was talking about earlier, one of the downfalls that I feel like this is something Rurock, you know, just so you guys understand, this is Rurock's first motorcycle helmet. And the fact that they're coming in the industry with such a strong thing, I am so excited for them. But something that they show that they might be new to the game was with the vents. And this kind of goes to all the wind noise situation. This front vent, these two little grills up here, those are the only vents that you can actually close on this helmet. All these other ones are totally open. You gotta have open and shuts, you know, for all these vents. It's perfect for me today. It's a cool day. Looks like it's about 75 degrees. I've got a lot of breeze. I'm not hot at all, which is great. But come winter time, I'm gonna wanna shut all these vents so I don't have to deal with all that cold wind hitting my face. Ideally on their next iteration, maybe they'll have some stuff like that, but that's just something that, you know, a big helmet manufacturer would know to give you open and close on all the vents of the helmet. But, you know, they're new to it, so it's gonna take some time. Granted, I am here in Georgia, so like the amount of time I'm gonna need to shut these vents isn't really bad, but I know you guys are watching all over the world and all over the country, so if you live in a colder climate, you gotta be careful if you're gonna grab one of these Atlas helmets. All right, so guys, overall, what do I feel about the helmet? So keeping in mind that this helmet is the first helmet, motorcycle helmet, that Rurock has put out on the market, I think it is absolutely phenomenal. Blows me away how light this helmet is. Yeah, the wind noise is bad. Yeah, the visor could have an upgrade to it. But for the money to get a helmet that is this light and this comfortable, and this is comfortable for me, guys. Comfort is a subjective thing. Somebody that finds this helmet comfortable, that's probably because this helmet's shell size and shell shape fit that person's head. Everybody's got a different shaped head. So, you know, that's gonna be where comfortable, like the comfortability comes into it. I personally find it very comfortable. So, with all that being said, I am a huge fan of this helmet. You know, I'm gonna gladly put in some earplugs and not even remember that there's bad wind noise in this helmet because I'm listening to music while I ride anyway. I think the lightness factor, the comfort factor, all of those things far outweigh anything that wind noise could be. But, and a huge but, if wind noise is a big deal for you, I don't think this helmet is right for you. I think you need to go with something else. This is not the one. I'll let you guys know how bad the wind noise is once I get the chin curtain put in. I'm sure Rurok will send me one. And uh, once I get that installed, I'll let you guys know. I'll do maybe a second video or something talking about that. But now before I end this review section, I do want to touch on something that I don't know if a lot of people are really talking about when they do their reviews. And this is all based on me hanging out and talking with the guys at Rurock and talking with them after they left Atlanta after giving me the helmet. I'm really excited for Rurock and the helmet industry in general for a main reason, and that's because Rurock is a small company they want the market share and with them being a small company it gives them the ability to be agile in changing things literally we were having a conversation me and the rural guys while they were in town i was like guys 
here's what I would love to see in a helmet. If I could have a, my dream helmet, here's what I would want, and here's what I think you should put into it. They were extremely receptive to the point where they were texting their team back home saying, hey, these are the things Chase is saying. This is what we need to work on. No big helmet manufacturer is going to do that. No helmet manufacturer is going to listen to their demographic in what they want to see in a helmet. We as motorcyclists have an opportunity right here to really help Rurock learn what we want in a helmet and then be able to change it quickly. You know what I'm saying? That does not happen very often, if ever. Rurock is small enough that we can guide them, we can help them out in making the perfect helmet for us. That is an opportunity that is not going to come along very often and I think us as a motorcycling community really need to take advantage of that and help support them to make helmets that we want to see. One more thing that I want to say about Rurock is the thing that a lot of you guys are probably liking the helmets already for and that's the graphics. Currently in the market, I feel like we got one other company that gives us motorcyclists cool graphics on helmets, and that's Icon. I've made plenty of videos about Icon saying I appreciate them doing something new. Now we've got Rurock also in the game giving us something new. Look at this helmet, guys. How many helmets on the market do you know of that look cool like this? There's not one in the motorcycling category that looks like this right now. And the fact that Rurock is Finally, we have another helmet company pushing artistic bounds in helmets. We don't have the plain or the like generic ass graphics that we get. They don't have, I mean, they have a full black one, but you know, they also have these cool helmets like this Ronin model that I'm currently wearing. Seeing a helmet company give a shit about what their helmets look like and wanting to give the customer, me and you, cool stuff to wear, you gotta appreciate that, man. I'm coming to the end of this road, so uh, I'm going to turn around so I can go ride it some more. So yeah guys, that's what I got about the uh, Rurock Atlas. This is the Ronin model that we have on. I'm going to throw it back to Chase in the studio to let you guys know about a coupon code that you guys can use if you want to grab an Atlas for yourself. I'll let that Chase talk about it since he's got his little fancy microphone and fancy camera, not these little GoPros. Anyway guys, thanks for riding around with me. Let's end this video up. All right guys, back in the studio, and as you can tell, I'm a huge fan of this Atlas helmet, but I'm even more of a fan of Rurock in general. Just, I do a lot of work with a lot of companies, and seeing the way they are taking to this community, I've got some really good feelings for them moving down the road. And I actually have a coupon code if you guys want to use to get the helmet for cheaper than it is on their website. Use code BOOP. Whoop. To be honest, I don't know what the code is, but it was that or it was in the description. You guys can check it out. And that'll give you guys a little money off if you're looking at grabbing an Atlas for yourself. I am personally going to be riding in one for a while to come. You guys will see in future videos. I am very excited about it. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button for brand new helmets in the market. I'm Chase on Two Wheels. This has been a review of the Atlas Ronin from Rurock. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you like motorcycle content because we make a lot of it here. And I will see you guys on the next one. All right, Outro Crew, so the first three exclusive designs that Rurock made was the Ronin, the Typhoon, and the Raptor. Here's what they look like. Which one's your favorite? Let me know in the comments. Also, how many of you guys are gonna use that coupon code and grab an Atlas? Cheap carbon fiber helmet, that's where it's at, fam. See you guys on the next one.